It's here. It's here. It's here. Moment I've been waiting for for five and a half fucking long years. Ta da! <laughs> yes! <laughs> My gateway to 188 countries. Let me give you a little bit of backstory. My family and I moved to the United States in 2017. As a green card holder, you need to live in the US for at least five years to be able to become a citizen. So I did. I've been an obedient resident of New York City for five years. I got used to living here. New York is a fine city, but believe me, I'll absolutely abuse the travel privileges this passport gives me. It opens a lot of borders for me that otherwise would be closed or would take a lot of paperwork to open. A month after receiving the passport, I booked my next flight to Guatemala. Why Guatemala, one might ask, and my answer to that is, why not? The first stamp in my new passport. The first whole day I just spent quietly in my hostel room, just went out for a little walk and had some really yummy food. Good morning, it's 6 a.m. here in Antigua, Guatemala and I came out early in the morning to take some pictures and videos. You know, that's one of my favorite things to do in a new place. What I absolutely love about this town is that you can find ruins like this everywhere in every part of the town. I find it very interesting. It has its own spirit. It feels like the past and the present are still both present today in the town. All these ruins are the results of earthquakes. Two earthquakes left the town in ruins two times. After 1776, people decided to leave the place for good since it was so dangerous. They say everyone just left everything behind and the city lay mostly abandoned for almost a century. They moved the capital to Ciudad de Guatemala. Fun fact, the name Antigua means old in Spanish and this change is the reason why the city is called old, in other words, old capital. Also, it's needless to say that the whole old town is a UNESCO's World Heritage Site. Although, in the mid-1800s, increased agriculture production, particularly coffee and grain, brought new investments to the region and so people started moving back in. The new generation, the people who did not remember the earthquake and the trauma. Walking in the streets, I could not help but wonder when will the next earthquake happen? Or the next eruption of any of these volcanoes? It will happen at some point, there's no doubt, but will modern science be able to predict them? And if yes, will the government act accordingly to save the lives of the people? I don't know. I just love these old colonial towns. I don't know what it is about, but I love looking at these buildings, this history that's still present here in this town in Antigua. The presence of Mayan culture is very big. You can feel it everywhere in the streets. So it's a, like a mix of European, it's colonial town. So there's a lot of uh, Spanish architecture. I don't know, I find it very, very interesting and fascinating to be here. I was supposed to be here just three days, but I decided to stay for a week because I just feel very comfortable and super, super safe here. Some of the buildings here are considered to be a heritage and you're not allowed to repaint it or remodel it anyhow. And I think this is one of them. Look at the layers here. It has like at least 10 layers of color. When I'm out in the streets with a camera, someone always asks me to take a picture of them. Then maybe we start chatting and they turn out to be some crazy people who bike from Mexico all the way down to South America. Juan, cuéntanos, ¿a dónde, ¿de dónde vas y a dónde vas? Yo soy de Colombia y vengo viajando desde México en mi bicicleta. Voy decidiendo cada día. Ajá. ¿Y es difícil viajar en bici en un México? Sí, hay... Un poquito, un poquito. Eh, lo más difícil es a dónde me voy a quedar. Ajá. ¿Y cómo encuentras los lugares? Donde voy llegando la gente, ¡ah! Oh, Colombia, Ajá. no, ven a mi casa. By the way, if you know somebody who travels like this or if you are the lucky one who does it, there's a website called warmshowers.com with more than 100,000 hosts who can give you a warm shower or a bed if you need one. I'm going to show you the most beautiful Starbucks there is. I've never seen a Starbucks like this before. Show me a better Starbucks. I dare you. Look at this beautiful church. Looks like a cake frosting. 
the absolute worst part about traveling is dealing with this shit in every three or four days. I'm packing up, I'm leaving my little cocoon where I stayed two nights and going more up in the mountains to stay with my couchsurfing host. Since it was my first couchsurfing experience in Guatemala, I wanted to play it safe. I met Roberto the previous day to make sure we got along and it would be a nice experience for both of us. We went to the National Museum and we did get along pretty well. A lot of people in the town greeted him kindly, which was a sign for me that he was a genuine, trustworthy person. You guys always comment on my videos to be careful, so this is me being careful, you see? <laughs> I have got to say this was one of the most modest couchsurfing experiences that I've ever had. It's crazy how different every of my venture is on the app. I've stayed in a five-star hotel and a high-end Airbnb apartment in the city center, which was all amazing experiences. But sometimes this simplicity and authenticity is exactly what you're looking for on the platform. This is when you see how people actually leave. Look what Roberto has here. Look at this. <laughs> Oh my god! How old are they? Three weeks. Three weeks? This is the mummy. The hero. Look in the camera. Oh, you scared. Oh, you scared. So beautiful. Not doing anything to your kids, I swear to God. Don't get me wrong, but they are my favorite part of this whole place. Don't take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Hola, what are we gonna do today? Today we're going to have a coffee painting class. When you said drawing uh -huh. with coffee, I thought we would draw a coffee plant. Oh! <laughs> I never imagined. So interesting, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now we're like, going literally, <laughs> yeah, really. And we're gonna have like green and the. No, everything is brown. Everything is brown. Yeah. Okay. Like, we're going to play with the how can I say? shades of shades brown. Of the brown. Point to point. So this is the volcano of Atitlan. This will sell for a million dollars when I'm dead. Right now, nobody cares. I know I've been saying this about most of the countries I have visited, but people here are very, very nice. Kids laugh all the time, adults greet you with a smile, and all people bow down gently in front of you. This attitude is mesmerizing considering how little they have in life. It always fascinates me how happier the people seem in poor Latin American countries. Sometimes I feel like the only thing they need from the West is good healthcare and that's about it. I also could not help but notice how hard the women work here. Apart from working full time, they raise two, three, four kids. The women who sell things in the streets always have their children with them. It must be tough for both the kid and the mom. Anyway, this sounds like this is the first time I'm saying this, which is really not, but these days I've been thinking a lot about what's right in their culture and what's wrong in my culture and vice versa. I'm kind of attempting to find the equilibrium, I guess, and try to find my place in all of this. Okay, so Roberto, tell me one thing that you really love about Guatemala, your favorite thing and your least favorite thing about the country. One of my favorite things is the coffee. I think this is the first thing. Like second thing, my favorite is like the Mountain. mountains. And my least is government and the people who have the control because they just like uh, don't doing nothing. And now we have uh, elections in June and it's so depressing because there is nothing good, like n any option, you know. And if you don't vote, they take you and they put the yeah. votes in the, another, in the yeah. most worst, okay. <laughs> so, is uh for me it's very depressing this kind of thing yeah. so i want you to make in your own script for example like my name maybe okay or some like wisdom or freedom or some beautiful word okay maybe. and i will make all the all right this, yeah like a fusion you know the name of this style is neo arabesco uh, the inspiration of the classic arabesque is 
uh, the design of the plants. Entonces, tu nombre y el, eh, la palabra. Solo amor. esto, eh, palabra aquí, en la otra. Ah, ok. Ah, it's separate. No usamos doble N. No, Nunca okay. usamos doble letras. Doble. Muy interesante, muy interesante. ¿Cómo se llama esta palabra, me dijiste? Sicuaruli. Sicuaruli. Ajá. Me encanta. Sicuaruli. Thank you very much, Roberto. Muy con mucho gusto. <risa> Con mucho gusto. Diana, ha sido un gusto recibirte y tienes casa en Antigua. Thank you so much. <risa> Thank you for watching. See you next time.